In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up in-app purchases in your Apple developer account so that you can link them to the in-app purchases you create in your BuddyBoss app settings. This means when a member purchases a product inside the iOS version of your app, it will register as a purchase of the in-app purchase it is linked to in your BuddyBoss app settings. From your app settings, you can control which content is unlocked when an in-app purchase is made, as well as information to explain and promote the item, such as a description and also a list of benefits. In separate tutorials, we will show you how to create in-app purchases in your Google developer account, how to activate the in-app purchases component in your app, and how to configure the settings of your in-app purchases and products, and how to connect your in-app products to membership plugins and to LearnDash courses. Before you complete the steps in this tutorial, we recommend you watch all of our in-app purchase tutorials so you have a full understanding of the process before completing each step. It is best to create your in-app purchases in your Apple and Google developer accounts first so that they are ready to be linked to the in-app purchases you will create in your BuddyBoss app settings. Before you begin, you will need to have completed the steps covered in our Connect Your Apple Developer Account and Configure Your iOS App Tutorials, which you can access from these two View Tutorial buttons. Okay, now let's get started with creating your iOS in-app purchases. Here I am inside of my App Store Connect account, which is accessible at appstoreconnect.apple.com. The first thing we need to do is set up the agreements, tax, and banking information that Apple requires before you can sell in-app purchases on iOS devices. So let's go ahead and click on Agreements, Tax, and Banking. Under the Paid Apps row of this table, you must have the status set to Active. If this is your first time coming here, you should see a View and Agree to Terms link, which I've already filled out for this account. You'll want to click on that link and enter the legal entity information for your business. If you are an individual without a separately established business entity, you can enter your personal information. After submitting this information, you'll need to read and accept Apple's paid apps agreement by checking the box and clicking on agree. Once you've done that, you'll come back here and click on set up tax, banking, and contacts. First, click on add bank account. This is the bank account that Apple's going to use to send you the proceeds from your sales coming from iOS devices. Be advised that Apple is going to deduct a 15% commission on all sales up to 1 million US dollars. After sales reach this point, the commission raises to 30%. Enter your bank account information. If you're unsure what to enter in these fields, please contact your bank for instructions. Once you've entered this information, agree to the disclaimer by checking the box and clicking on add. We can see here, your banking updates are processing and you should see the changes in 24 hours. Next, we'll click on Complete Tax Forms. You will be presented with a series of options here to select from. After selecting the options that are relevant to your business, you'll have one or more tax forms to complete. We cannot provide advice on how to complete these forms as they are legally binding agreements that must be completed accurately according to the laws of each territory. If you have any questions completing this step, please contact a tax professional in the country your business operates from. Once you have completed the tax forms, you will need to add contact information for each of these areas of your business. You can use the same details multiple times. For each box, click on the link, then enter the contacts information and click Add. Once you've completed all of these steps, you can start creating your in-app purchases. So I've added all of my contacts, and then I'll come back to App Store Connect, and I'll select My Apps. On this page, you'll see all the apps you've set up in your Apple developer account. By following our Configure Your iOS app tutorial, you'll set this up already. Let's click on the app to open up the app settings. Now let's click on the Manage link under In-app Purchases. If you haven't yet submitted a version of your app to the store with an in-app product included, you'll see this notice at the top here. It explains that your first in-app purchase must be submitted with a new version of your app. This means if your app is already published, you'll need to generate a new build of it and publish that version. After you publish a version of your app with your first in-app purchase included, you can add more in-app purchases in the future without Apple requiring you to submit a whole new app version. However, note that each new product will need to be reviewed by Apple 
before it is available in the iOS version of your app. Let's click on the plus symbol to add a new product. Now select one of the following options. Consumable is a product that is used once, after which it becomes depleted and must be purchased again. There isn't a use case for this in the current version of the BuddyBoss app, so you should not use this option. Non-consumable is a product that is purchased once and does not expire or decrease with use. For example, you could select this option for selling a membership or LearnDash course that is purchased once and never expires. Auto-renewable subscription is a product that allows users to purchase content for a set period. This type of subscription renews automatically and less canceled by the user. This is useful for when you want to sell memberships or LearnDash courses that will renew automatically on a set interval. And finally, non-renewing subscription. This is a product that allows users to purchase content for a limited duration, which will not renew automatically. You should use this option for selling memberships or LearnDash courses that will expire and not renew automatically. Let's select auto-renewable subscription, and then I'll click create. Enter a reference name for your product. This is going to be used as a reference to identify your product in your Apple developer account. It will not be shown to your members in the Apple App Store or used in your app. I'll call this silver membership. Next, give your product an ID. It's recommended that you use the same reverse format as in your bundle ID, but instead of using your app name at the end, use your product name. So for example, my bundle ID here is com.buddyboss.releaseTest. So I'll come back here and use com.buddyboss.silver membership. And we'll click next. Now you'll need to create a subscription group. This option is only required when you have selected auto renew subscription as the product type, even if you only have one product in the group. A subscription group is used to group multiple auto renewing products together so that only one can be subscribed to at a time. For example, you may wish to sell multiple levels of a membership, such as silver and gold. Alternatively, you may want to offer different subscription lengths, such as monthly or yearly. I'll select this. The reference name that you enter here is only used in your Apple developer account. Let's go ahead and call this one membership tiers. And then I'll click create. and our product has been created. Now let's go fill in the rest of the information so that it's ready for approval by Apple. First, let's set a subscription duration. This option will only show if your product is an auto renew subscription. Select from the dropdown how often the subscription should renew. I'll select one month and click the save button in the top right. Now let's select our product's price. Click the plus symbol next to subscription prices. Enter the main currency that your app will use, and then select a price from the options that Apple provides. And click on Next. You can see that Apple has automatically converted our price into the correct amount for all other currencies supported on iOS devices. You can change any of these options if you need to. Once you're ready, click on Create. Click OK, and click the Save button again. Then go back to the product's main page. Now we'll set a display name and description for our product. These will display in your app after your members click Purchase in the product screen and on the Apple App Store. Click the plus symbol next to Localizations. Select the main language you use in your app. Now give your products a display name and then a description. And click save again. You can optionally add a different display name and description for other languages. Finally, you'll need to enter review information. This will help Apple with their review of the product. You can optionally add an App Store promotion. More importantly, you need to enter a screenshot. If it's for a course, upload a screenshot of the course in your app. If it's for a membership, show a screenshot of some content in your app 
that is only accessible when they purchase this product. And then enter notes to explain your product. In your notes, you should include what the product is. For example, a course that teaches members how to play guitar. You should explain what the product is accessing in your app. For example, a course, or by explaining which areas are unlocked via the product. And you should explain how to access the product screen in your app. For example, you could tell them to log into the app and go to the more screen and select products. Once you've entered all this information with the screenshot, again, click save. And that's it. That's how to set up a product in your Apple developer account. Complete these steps for each in-app product that you'll be selling in your app. Once you've set up products in both your Apple and Google developer accounts, you can proceed to the steps in our setting up in-app purchases tutorial.